where would you like us to stand? You're fine. I'll, I'll move it around. Oh. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. We've got a huge crowd here today, so we will try to make ourselves heard over the, the, the din. Um, this is Amy Killebrew. And this is Vicki Rakowski. And we are Make It At Your Library. We were um, in the 2013 cohort of iLeads a couple years ago now. And we're going to talk a little bit today about, um, you know, the process of iLead and kind of how to keep it going once you're done, um, if you so choose. Um, before we get going, though, we wanted to talk about the missing people from our presentation. Um, this is Katie Height, Elizabeth Ludeman, and Allison Parker. These were the ones who couldn't make it today. So um, they're still very much a part of the team. Yeah. So. Although they were total slackers about this presentation, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> um, so uh, these three are missing, but we are still very much a group. We're still kind of kicking. We're still figuring out a way to kind do this of. project. We're kicking. We're kicking. And screaming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're, we're making our project still kind of live on, even though I live <laughs> over. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how to do that. So, okay, Amy, Amy will so us. we're going to take a step back a couple years to I Lead 2013. That was our cohort. I guess we were the third cohort. Um, and we originally started out as the Llama Project. So if you hear people talking about the Llamas, that's why. Um, Llama stands for Leading Libraries to Awesome Makerspace Awareness. Um, we eventually became Make It at Your Library. That's in the name of our website. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still very much llamas at heart. Uh, Lesson is if you have an acronym or if you have a nickname, choose or a wisely mascot. because yeah. people will call you that for years to come. So. Yes, it's true. Um, okay, so our original idea when we showed up at iLead was to have a website where librarians could find maker projects that they could use in their programming and then also a place where they could share ideas and contribute projects. Um, so we had this idea when we got here, but we really didn't know what it was going to look like or how to make it a reality. You're probably feeling similarly about your own projects. Um, one of the really important things that happened for us is that we found a partner who was already doing something similar, um, though on a much larger level. Um, if you haven't heard of Instructables before, you should definitely check them out. Um, but the thing that um, worked for us is that they were eager to work with librarians because they wanted to expand their med maker education. Um, so the thing that they gave us was access to their content. So once we had the content, um, we could really focus our energy on creating a website that made that content useful and usable for librarians. Um, they also help us significantly with outreach and so part of why our website gets 10,000 hits a day is because Instructables was in, instrumental in, in uh, driving traffic. Yeah, driving traffic there. So um, this you know, started out as a very nebulous idea for us, um, and in, now it's a really cool project. So, yeah. so, so you got this idea, now what? Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to talk about the process that we went through at iLead. Um, you know, a couple of the key things that really were instrumental for us. And mainly, we're going to talk about team dynamics and how to make the most of those, how to keep your project going, and how to nurture it um, when real life sets in. So. You might think it's hard now, but it's much harder when you don't have to come down here and nobody's feeding you. And, you know, it's, it's tough work to be ready for this, but it's, it's, a different kind of work when you're not here anymore um, out of the safe cocoon of UIS. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what to expect when you're eye reading? Um, really you should expect the unexpected. Um, we had a lot of big steps and we had a lot of really great things come out of our project um, and a lot of really good luck and you know good reaching out to the right people um, and we learned a lot about how to build a project and how to create a team in the meantime. So I lead is famously about the process. Um, I see a couple people in the back who are part of the creation of I lead and the discussion of how we are supposed to be doing this process. Um, it's about the process, not the product, but I bet you have some pretty cool ideas for what to do with that $4,000 grant that you're eventually going to get. 
And it's pretty rare in life that somebody says, hey, here's 4,000 bucks. Make your wildest library dream come true. And that's, you know, that's something to honor. You know, you can, you can figure out something pretty cool to do with that money. So while it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out and you still will have learned something at the end of the day, um, you know, there's every, every chance that your project will continue when you're done. Um, give yourself permission to go with it, to go with the process. It's very not work-like. Um, things here are really fun and fluid. Um, give up the idea of being handed directions on how to do something. There really aren't any directions because you're the one creating this project. Um, no one's done what you're going to do before. It may be similar to something that you've heard of before, but it's, it's, it's all you. You are creating it. Um, that's both scary and fun. Neither of us has children, but I imagine that's what it's like to have a child. <laughs> Um, there's going to be times when you are ready to just lock in and do your work and, you know, get everything on that to-do list knocked out. And then there's going to be times when you just want to go home at the end of the day. You've been working all day. It's been a long week. There's going to be times when you want to go home and put on Netflix and not think about it. And that is an acceptable way to deal with the stress. That's fine. If you need to go radio silent for a couple of days, the most important thing is that you communicate with your team members. I'm a little overwhelmed right now. I'm going to work on XYZ next weekend, and I'll finish that up. Just always be in touch. Always be talking. Um, I think that's probably the biggest takeaway. Just sort of respect your teammates and, um, you know, be honest with them. Um, always, always talk. Speaking of which, there are deadlines here in Springfield. You have to do a video by, I think, Wednesday night and have it ready to view on Thursday. Um, at the next cohort or at the next meeting in June, you'll have to do a poster presentation. Those are the deadlines that that iLead gives you. But then there's the deadlines that you have to give yourselves to be ready to, to be in Springfield. Um, stay in contact with your team all the time. It will all work out. There were times in 2013 when you know the, we kind of didn't know what the next step would be or how we would get there. All that really matters is that you're talking to each other. Um, we, when we were here in 2013, and this might still be the case, the instructors really stressed roles on the team. For us, what was more important to think about was tasks. We, we all kind of had our own um, strengths and weaknesses. We just sort of made to-do lists and um, got them done. And then, yeah, just split up the work. Like, these yeah. are all the things that need to be done. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Vicky's going to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, so that really worked out well for us to think more in terms of like task management right. as opposed to specific defined roles for mm -hmm. each team member. Because everything's integrated really at, at the end of the day. You know, it's yeah. not like, you know, you can just build one wall of the house without talking to the person building the other wall of it. Everything at the end of the day is kind of integrated. And, um, you know, find out whatever communication method works best for you and then use it. If it's texting, it's texting. If it's having, you know, a Google Drive that you share. Mm -hmm. I have so many llama documents on my Google Drive that, like, I... My Google Drive is really just... Just for us. Just for us. <laughs> like, I don't use it yeah. <laughs> yeah. anymore. I don't. Yeah. I think the most important thing about all of this is it's not about getting an A. It's not about getting a good evaluation from your boss or, um, you know... It's getting about a raise. Learning. Yeah, it's about learning. Yeah. And this is such a rare time in your life to get to be able to have this time where you just get to do that. So you're growing a whole new network of awesome people. Yes. Um, so I think we've talked a lot about team, and we're going to stress this even more that your team is really important to the success of your project. So, um, you know, we were a bit lucky we all sort of knew each other some of us knew each other better than others um, and and more importantly we liked each other um, at least enough to work together um, for a year on this project um, then so we wanted to get away from each other no, just kidding <laughs> no clearly we didn't yes yeah. we're, we're still, still here, here. <laughs> but um, you know just Knowing each other and each other's personalities helps you work through some of the difficulties you're going to experience in this process. Um, so make sure you get time, make time to get to know each other. Um, so you won't be able to control it, but you can definitely encourage good team dynamics. You can be yourselves, you can be respectful of what others are bringing to the table. Um, 
again, most important for us. We understood and embraced our team dynamic. We were all leaders in our own way. So instead of designating roles, we really focused more on the tasks at hand. Um, yeah. That, that was important. You know, start making jokes with each other. Write down your jokes. We, we have like a, a file in Google Drive just of jokes from every iLead session. Sometimes I have no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> but um, it was the kind of thing where we could remember something and laugh about it and, you know, it kind of encouraged it, us yeah. to. And it friendly. helps break the tension, you know. Yeah. After we've had a really difficult or just a meeting where we've done a lot of work, mm -hmm. at the very end of the meeting, we'll take a few minutes just to sort of revisit those things that made us laugh. Yeah. And, yeah. Or we'll just watch YouTube videos of kittens. It's fine. Yeah. Do what you gotta do. Um, we said that this is, when we were here, we said that this is like library sleep, uh, sleepaway camp. It's like you just get to go and have fun and talk about cool library things. The reason it's like that is because you're with kind of a random assortment of people we don't know that well and you kind of get to know very intensely, very quickly. So just kind of embrace that opportunity to play. Um, another big thing, and this is going to be tricky for people who don't live close to each other, I, try to meet in person as much as you can. Some people might be in Carbondale, and some people might be in Rockford. Um, for people who are watching from out of state, those are really far apart. Um, <laughs> so figure out some times that you can meet in person. If you can't do that, get on Google Hangouts so that you yeah. can video each other. Um, set dates, get your calendars out now, set some dates, and make those your dates. That way, you're not trying to scramble a few months later saying, oh, I can kind of, no, I can't do it. Well, so-and-so can be there, so-and-so can't. Set the dates now because you know you'll think your future self will think your past self. Um, and we still do that now. We still do that now. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, even if it's just you have a standing date to work every third Friday evening of the month with each other, then that's the standing date. If somebody can't make it, they can't make it. Um, so there's no I in team, but there's a Beck and there's an Anne and there's an Andy and a Gwen and Sandy and mentors and instructors. Don't be afraid to ask for their help. They are here to help you. Um, this, this is a silly <laughs> picture. You will notice that Andy is pretending to be a statue in this picture. He is helping us recreate the scene, Grecian Urn from the Music Man, his idea. Um, <laughs> these are such great, fun, nice people. And to know them is really an honor. And to kind of get to, you know, to, to, to feel like you can shoot the state library director an email it's kind of a privilege. Um, this picture is from, we were here in June, and yeah. we, for whatever reason in June we tried to make the hashtag where's Andy a, a thing. thing. It didn't really go. Well, we used it. We did. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, be silly with everybody and just get just to Just an them. idea we're throwing. Up. Yeah. Don't say no. Just think about it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you have this great kind of like network of kind of professionals to guide you through the process. I also wanted to talk a little bit about your community reps. I know that that's been a question for some people. How involved do you get them? Um, what it, how are you supposed to work with them? And I think that the big takeaway is um, find out what will work for you and your team and your community reps. For us, we tended to rely actually on Amy's community rep um, more than anybody else's. It's not like we cut the other ones out, but she kind of had <coughs> feedback for us that really um, gave us insight into what we were trying to do. So. For your community rep, maybe what they want is a simple brief update after each cohort meeting. Um, maybe if you've done something kind of like big, um, like you've created a large part of your website, if you're making a website or something, just say, hey, would you mind taking a look at this and um, you know, tell me what you think about the usability, whatever you want to know. Um, another really great thing to think about is cross-checking your assumptions with your community rep. So you, know, you might think that you're creating a blog for um, librarians to find the best resources when it comes to like the newest reference materials. I don't know, I just said the most library words I could think of. And you think it's going to be good and you think you know what you're up to and then you go to your community rep and you say, what do you think of this? And they say, why would I need it? You know, if that's not obvious to them, if you have to explain the project on site, Maybe start thinking about how you can retool it. And that's not a disaster when that happens. You just kind of have to tweak. So cross-check your assumptions against your community reps about your project. OK, so 
We mentioned before how important our partner was to us in the success of our project. Um, and, you know, outside of having a strong team dynamic, having a partner um, is really important, or at least. It was for us. It was for us. Yeah. Um, so, you know, take a minute and think about who your natural partners might be. Um, those who might have a stake in your project success, um, you know, talk to your team about that and then take the initiative and get in touch with them. You know, they're not going to come to you. Um, your teams are new, your ideas are new. They don't you know have that, to go to them. Yeah, they don't know that you're a thing yet, mm -hmm. but you're a thing. Right. So tell them about uh, yourselves. Yeah, and so even if you don't end up having like an official partnership, they probably know things that could help you and, um, you know, you can maybe find a relationship that's mutually beneficial. So the way we found our partner was actually through iLead. Um, we were here during the first intercession in March, and one of the presenters was Travis Good. So he's an expert in the maker movement and has done some research in libraries about where libraries are in the maker movement. Um, he had actually come up with like a, a way to sort of grade where a library is that he calls levels of readiness. And that actually um, became a really important part of our website. But, um, you know, so he's giving his presentation and we think, wow, the things he's talking about, those really align with what we're trying to do. Um, and then at the very end, he mentioned that Instructables was interested in working with libraries. So we're all kind of looking down the road at each other like this, like, oh my God. Like, yeah, we could have just sat there and thought, oh, well, isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, and instead we were like, oh my gosh, maybe, maybe they would work with us. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. You so, talk to them. No, you talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> so we sort of like eagerly, but also nervously approached Travis Good at the end of his presentation, like, oh, hey, so our project sounds like something that, you know, maybe Instructables would want to work with and um, and he was like oh yeah definitely let me put you in touch with them and he's like sent an email Took straight away right there yeah, yeah to you know the contact at instructables and like by the end of the day we had started you know sort of an email exchange it was crazy um, and you know our mouths were kind of on the floor the whole time so it, it just any, you'll be surprised. Yeah. You'll be surprised. The worst thing that can happen is somebody says, "Oh, that's you know, I don't know if that'll work for us." Um, yeah. The best thing that can happen is they'll be like, "Yeah, that's great." Um, you know, just, you become a thing by making yourself a thing. That's kind of a big takeaway for this. Mm -hmm. So, and then that partnership really led to some others um, that sort of fell in line for us. Um, not necessarily all of them are partnerships, but at least. Um, conversations that we've had with other companies and entities. Mm -hmm. um, so like Autodesk is the parent company of Instructables. They're really, really important <coughs> to us. I would call them a partner. Mm -hmm. um, people who have approached us, groups like 3D Systems, Little Bits, Yalsa, um, you know, now we're working with the Knight Foundation. And we'll talk um, more about that in a bit. Yeah, we will. But of course, never ever forget your first partner, the Illinois State Library, who is still an important partner to mm -hmm. us. Um, you know, and I should also mention that it's okay to say no to partners or potential partners that approach you um, if your goals don't really match up. Um, we had this happen to us shortly after our website launch. Inventables impro approached us like, hey, we want to work with you. We thought, oh wow, that's great. So we sat down with them and during that sit down meeting we realized that their goals and what they were trying to accomplish was very different from mm -hmm. what we were trying to accomplish and you know yeah. it was okay it was a learning experience but ultimately we had to sort of right I let mean that go. saying no to somebody who like you know has an office is hard yeah <laughs> um but I think we kind of realized like this isn't gonna be useful to us and we don't have time to pursue it and you know that was that was actually a really big learning moment for us it was it, like okay yeah we, it really was we can focus on x y and z not a b c so mm -hmm. that was good for us um, so, you think you know what your project is about now, which is great. We thought we did too, and then Travis Good talked and we're like, oh, that's our project, but like a thousand times better than we could ever do it. Um, so, let's just piggyback on that. Um, you think you know what your project's about. It's March. It's not going to, March isn't going to look like June, and June isn't going to look like October. It's always going to change on you, and I think when Anne was talking this morning about um, 
you know, failure and, and experimentation. That's what she's talking about. The idea that you have now is the seed, and you can figure out how to make it grow, or you can figure out what it's going to turn into, and that's a good thing. Um, just take the most viable element of your idea and start to nurture it, and talk with your group about how you can kind of grow from there. Things are probably going to change. That's a good thing. That's part of how you learn. Um, we talked about partners and how crucial they've been to our success. Maybe your partners are just another group here at iLead. Um, maybe your partners are somebody in your library community. It doesn't have to be huge scale, it can be small scale, it can be whatever. Um, just kind of start to flesh out your idea. This whole situation is an opportunity for you to sort of learn what you're trying to do. You have nine months to grow this idea and it's gonna, it's gonna change on you. Um, for us, I, I don't think that we really had our thing until like the second session. Mm -hmm. That was when everything kind of came together. Yeah, before that we were talking to Instructables and like how might we use your content and what are we going to do with it and mm -hmm. you know it was still very much in a nebulous, yeah. undefined state and then I think about the time that we brought on a developer to help us with the site, we finally sort of had an idea like okay we're going to have a database and we're going to index things, um, you know we had to find a developer who could help us do that. And so our developer was really important. He also gave us a huge discount on the cost of development, which we never right. had realized how expensive that is. Part of our learning process was uh, somebody had asked us, with well, this website when we wanted to create, somebody had said, well, can't you just use a WordPress blog? And we really couldn't. Yeah. Um, for what we wanted to do and the kind of content we wanted to pull from Instructables, we needed like a legit standalone website. And we, part of our learning process was writing a request for proposal. We had never done that before. Um, and yeah. Amy was talking a little bit about how our developer, um, by the way, developers don't cost $4,000. They cost like $20,000 plus. Yeah. Um, so we actually, when Sean Fitzpatrick, who's our developer, wrote us back, wrote, uh, answered our proposal. <laughs> With the price. Yeah, it was like $23,000 <laughs> and we were like, what can we get for $4,000? We, yeah, um, we like wrote back and we were like, okay, so here's the deal. Yeah. We have $4,000 yeah. and, and this he, is what we're doing. And he came back and was like, oh, well, I think your idea is really cool. So yeah, I'll help you in whatever way I'll, I can. I'll do it pro bono. And we were like, and we're like, well, we still have four thousand so dollars. You so take it. You take it. <laughs> yeah. He cut down some of the functionality of the site, and um, I mean, it's still totally one hundred percent functional. Yeah, it's totally what I he, think we wanted. He took away like two of the bells and two of the whistles, and it's it's still what we wanted. Um, just ask. You'd be surprised what people will do yeah. for you. Um, so you know that was that was part of our learning process. Um, so one last thing about this. One of the things that we kind of noticed with a lot of the other teams was they were really just kind of, you know, hell-bent on sticking to that first idea they had. And I would just encourage you, whenever you feel like you're not sure why you're doing something, you're not sure where something's going to go, you're not sure who's going to use it, again, it doesn't have to be a perfect thing when you walk away in October, but if you're never, if you kind of lose sight of what it's for, just kind of go back to the people. It's about the people. What does it do for the population you originally set out to help? Um, that is that is the big takeaway. Um, and just ask. Ask the population. Um, for some people, that's easy. For some of us, that's the population of librarians. For some of us, that's students. So do what you can. Yeah, it's really about making the technology work for people, not people working for technology. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. It's a sort of, you come here for the technology training, but at the end of the day, it's it's much bigger right now. You're just trying to do something for a population. Yeah. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about some of the other elements that helped us. And, and things we learned. Right, and what you can kind of tap into for your group. So, yeah. so um, the other thing that we did, even before our website launched in October, was we started marketing what we were doing. We knew we had this website coming, that we had this partnership with Instructables, and we really wanted to promote it. So um, we grabbed the handles on Twitter, we, you know, we Facebook, yeah. Pinterest, yeah. We just um, started. And we started talking about it. I think we even went to ILA that summer and, mm -hmm. and talked about it, even though we didn't have a whole lot to show them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, speaking of partners, there was another group at the time that was doing a maker project, mm -hmm. and they were um, participating in the ILA Maker Showcase, and so yeah. they said, hey, would you like to, to come with us? And, you know, we did. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so start talking about it early um, and get people interested. Um, another thing we learned is that sometimes things can take on a life of their own. You have sort of a, a message and you put out a press release, it's very specific about what you're doing, and then other people grab onto that and suddenly your message, you know, maybe they're only portraying part of your message right. or, you know, not representing it in a way that you would have represented it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we've ultimately learned is that you sort of have to let that go. Like, you can't control everything that happens. So, um, these two images. Two examples. <laughs> um, bigger than Baldacci, what we mean is we showed up in the ALA News above David Baldacci and we were like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> this uh, is a screenshot from my phone and I think I texted it with several like expletives to the other llamas like, look at that, oh my god. Um, uh, the other one, we... Deal with it, Baldacci. Just kidding. So we were doing Google searches for Make It at Your Library to see sort of where um, our message and our press release had gone and we were on an Italian website about um, recycling. We think that the Google Translate is really spotty, <laughs> but uh, Yeah, so you know people in Italy were thought what we were doing was cool. Yeah <laughs> I don't know if they 100% got it, but yeah. you know Here's a picture that I think you guys will be taking these pictures tomorrow with your team when, when Jesse White comes through so this is a picture of us doing our llama pose, and it's just kind of silly, and I don't know why Italy would know what we were doing. They pulled yeah. it off our website. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was very strange. It's going to go uh, where it goes. <laughs> yeah, and it still sort of happens occasionally, but, um, you know, the, the only thing you can really do is, you know, stick to your message and be consistent in your social media and on your website and in your press releases. I think too, like if, if something starts happening that's a little weird, um, like we had a group that kind of appropriated our like graphics, logo. our logo, yeah. and I think they were just excited and they were a startup in Florida, and no offense if Florida's watching, um, but it was one of those things where it was like, do we need to hop on this and deal with it? And it, it was kind of just an innocent, weird thing. And yeah, and it sort of, you know. It solved itself. It was, it was weird because they were using our logo and then also tweeting us. And we were like, what did you guys know how Twitter works? I don't know yeah. what they did. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes it gets weird. Just go with it. Um, I think, let's see. So that was kind of one tool that we used that I think a lot of people in our cohort necessarily didn't. We marketed it. Just market it with whatever, with whatever means you're, you have available to you are. Um, so post I lead life, where do we go from here? So this is us in, I think, Washington, yeah. D.C. We were there to present at computers and libraries. Um, I think one of the big things is, um, you know, we, we really like each other and we have a lot of fun together. Every single llama was at my wedding, um, including the one who moved to Ohio. So just, we all really just enjoy the heck out of each other. Um, but at the end of the day, you need a plan. Liking each other is not enough. So this is us, and we, we had just gotten to D.C. We were going to present to computers and libraries, and that's the Airbnb apartment we stayed at. They left the wine. We don't just bring wine wherever we go. So wow. <laughs> we might. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> so we, we've talked about keeping it going, and we want to talk a little bit about some of the specifics of how to do that and how to kind of just give it some legs. Um, so one of the things we did um, right after the website launched was we started presenting and we have people you know asking us to present and then we also sought out a we couple submitted of opportunities some uh, yeah yeah so um you know somebody suggested why don't you submit to computers and libraries their theme this year is had to hack do with the library the, oh hack the library yeah. yeah so we thought okay we put in a proposal and it was accepted and so yeah you know we went to dc um but more most of what we've done has been a little bit more local, mm -hmm. so like ILA, ALA when it was in Chicago. Um, On the front lines, which is here in Springfield, so yeah. Yeah, we've done, and we've done a couple webinars, Twitter takeovers, um, you know, just keep spreading the message, because every time we talk about what we're doing, we mm -hmm. always get people who come up and say, oh, that's really interesting. 
how can I use it or how can I get involved? Um, or, you know, we were talking about doing something like this and, oh, now your website yeah. has all these projects that I can use. It's so helpful. So, yeah. yeah. So, word of mouth is probably the most important thing. Um, and I think the first thing we felt qualified to talk about was our experience at iLead. People were interested. People didn't really know what it was, um, so we could talk about what we learned and what we did. That was a foot in the door, and then we could talk about our project and, and what it was. So How the website worked, how yeah. you could use it. Yeah. There are things about your project that are going to be interesting to different people for different reasons, whether that's the technical side of it, whether it's the, the people side of it, um, whether it's the how and the why. So, you know, don't underestimate that. People want to know. Um, so keeping the magic in the relationship, how do you do that? Um, we use Skype. We have one member, as I said, who moved to Ohio. So that's Katie Height. She's on one of my plant stands in my dining room. And um, cookies, coffee, tea, treats, um, make it a little fun when you get together. And sort of um, come August or September, you're going to have to start making a plan for what you want to do. If you want to hand it off, if you want to shut it down, if you, if some person on your team says, you know what, I can't commit to any more time other than this, I'd be happy to help out every now and then, but I'm, I'm out, that's fine. Just kind of keep in communication about it. Um, talk to each other in like August, September about what you see happening once October is done. Or even before if it yeah. is relevant. Yeah, we, we always knew we wanted to keep it going because we, we had developed this cool website and we had a partnership. We had yeah. this cool partnership. So we always knew that we could do it. I think we've we've thought for many months now or years now that we would get some kind of intern to help us and it hasn't happened yet. So if you know a chump who's looking to be an intern, um, and not get paid. <laughs> and not get paid. Um, <laughs> um, let them know. <laughs> um, we've I think for the llamas we just knew we had something we wanted to pursue. So whatever it is that you're doing Think about what you want to have happen. It's okay if not everybody can do it. It just happened to work out that we all could. We've had like some some obstacles in the past two years. Eighty percent of the llamas have changed jobs. Um, one of us has gotten married. Um, the other one has moved to Ohio. So we've had some things that we've kind of had to to jump over. Um, we set working meetings. That's a big deal for us. We we just kind of trying to find ways to make it work and. There are times when we're all like, oh, God, Amy's doing all the work. And then we, you know, guilt <laughs> ridden we step in. And I'm like, I can't do anything. Yeah. And I, I just sort of step back yeah. and other people yeah. take it over. So um, the communication is really important, just yeah. keeping in contact and being honest. Like, yeah. hey, guys, I can't do this right now. Right. I'll touch base in a couple weeks. Right. And that's okay. So strategies for moving forward. Um, so I lead is you know stressful enough and you have to show up and you have lots of work to do um, but the nice thing is that you have the benefit of the dedicated time and the space to do the work when you come here to Springfield we don't have that luxury anymore so it's a little bit harder for us um, so you know we all it should be said we all have the five of us all have full-time jobs and libraries so what we do for Make It At Your Library is all outside of work time. It's in and, the evenings or yeah. on the weekends. I mean, yeah. and personal interests and travel and mm -hmm. hobbies and other projects, you know, so, it yeah. just kind of fills into the space that's left and we yeah. like it. So yeah, so be honest about how you're feeling with your team. Um, again, working meetings are a good thing for us. You know, right now we're meeting every couple weeks, like Sunday evenings and Whoever can make it makes it, and if somebody can't make it, that's fine. You know, we and that's, push forward. And that's, we we're going to talk a little bit about um, the latest initiative we're doing. We're meeting with a little bit more increased frequency because we have something to, to work on. But um, before that, I think we met every other month on a Friday night. And we would write content for our blogs. We would, you know, schedule tweets. We would just kind of have a working meeting because... You know, it's so much more fun to eat, take out with each other, and have a glass of wine, and you know, yeah. do that stuff as opposed to like, oh god, I have to write a blog post. Well, so. and you're more motivated to do it if there's somebody sitting next to you doing the same thing. Right. I think so. That was a good tool for us. Mm -hmm. um, we also, you know, use a lot of tech tools to stay in touch with each other. Uh, for a long time, we used Google a lot. We still use Google a lot mm -hmm. for email and Google Drive and Google Hangouts, um, Skype. 
Um, now that our project has evolved a little bit, we've moved to a slightly more sophisticated tool called Basecamp, which is like project management software. So it just helps us sort of keep everything organized mm -hmm. and together. And in one place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Google Drive, it can, our Google Drive has gotten so big, there's so much in it that it was almost. It's bigger than Baldacci. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is, yeah. Um, and, you know, even since we've launched our website, our project has changed a little bit. Our focus has changed, um, you know, which we'll talk about um, what we're focused on now. But, um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time in the year between when iLead ended and now just talking about ideas we had. Okay, well, what are some other ways we could leverage what we've done yeah. um, to, you know, continue spreading the maker movement? Um, you know, we tossed out lots of ideas and we would start to pursue something and then go, wait a minute, maybe Wrong this direction. isn't yeah, the right direction for us. So it took a little time, but we hit on something that we hit a group. We think is pretty cool. Um, we feel like marriage counselors, but communication is key. So <laughs> um, figure out what works for you guys and just go with it. Respect what people can do, respect their boundaries. Apparently, Amy doesn't want me texting her at three in the morning with great ideas. That's her choice. No, I'm just kidding. That hasn't I happened. like to sleep with you. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> um, when it comes to keeping the project going, one of the things has, um, that's been good for us is dividing things into chunks and just saying, I can take that, or you know, Liz, would you mind doing that? You did this before. Divide into chunks, then conquer in a way that makes sense. It's hard to stay motivated when you don't have a clear goal in mind, and that was actually, I think, one of our big challenges yeah. once we were done. You know, we, we kept populating content on our website, and we you know, would go talk about it at different things, and um, I, I think that the outreach, so to speak, that we did at conferences was a big part of getting so much traffic back to the website, but um, you know, it just kind of, it didn't seem to have a purpose, and we're going to talk about, you know, how we found a new direction. Um, I think another challenge is money, because, you know, you don't have any that is coming from the state. So figure out, you know, look for other grants maybe, um, figure out if somebody's willing to donate something to you. You know, for us, we kind of just figured once the money we gave our developer to host runs out, we'll just each chip in a, a little bit of money and pay for hosting every year. You know, figure out what will work for you. Maybe we won't. We might not have to. Um, he might forget about us. <laughs> um, and say no. That's okay to say no. It doesn't all, you know, it doesn't have to be all consuming. It can be done in October. That's fine. Um, figure out what moving forward means to you and then just go with it. Okay. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we spent a year maintaining the site and promoting it. Um, and we were talking about ideas for expanding. And so, ultimately, what we ended up doing was, um, we took all that, you know, people would come to us too and say, oh, hey, have you thought about doing this? Like, I think somebody once suggested that we should, you know, maybe go to like, do some almost like consulting with libraries about how to start, get started with the maker movement. And we, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Um, you know, this idea of maker kits has sort of come around a couple times and there have been a couple of groups that have done something like that. So um, that's really the idea that we ended up picking up on mm -hmm. um, to move forward with was okay we have this website we get a lot of traffic how can we leverage it you know it seemed like we post all these projects but if a library doesn't have the tools to make them with yeah. then um, you know they're sort of at a loss yeah. and so how can we get the tools um, to libraries who don't necessarily have the funding for it or the space for it mm -hmm. um, so that's really where we are now. So we heard about this great opportunity from yeah. another iLeader, um, a grant from the Knight Foundation. And Amy's going to talk a little bit about yeah. what that was all about. Flip slide. I will flip the slide. Thank you. OK. Um, so I guess it was about five months ago we heard about this grant opportunity from the Knight Foundation. Um, I think we literally found out about the grant like four or five days before the proposal was due. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we thought, well, what the heck, we'll give it a shot. And yeah. we drew up a proposal and posted it on the News Challenge site. Um, 
and we pestered everybody we knew to go look at it and mm -hmm. click yeah. like. I think the word was applause that they, they used. Oh, yeah. And, um, was. Um, and so, you know, so we just threw this idea out there, as did like 600 or 700 other people. Yeah. Including Beck and mm -hmm. including Brian Pitchman, who's uh, an eye leader from, from way back. Yeah, an instructor. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we just threw it out there into the universe to see what would happen. And um, a few weeks later, we found out that we have been named semi-finalists. Um, and I think there were about 40 of those. Yeah. And so at that point, and the Knight Foundation moves pretty fast. So at yeah. that point, you have like a week to give them some more solid details about your plan. And right. you're like, well, how would we do this? And yeah, it was <laughs> literally five days before my wedding. And we went to go have a meeting at the Knight Foundation's office down <laughs> Uh, in yeah. downtown Chicago, and we right. were like, Ooh. yeah. So we were semi-finalists, and we were finalists, and yeah, we had to go like meet with representatives from the Knight Foundation. We were like, what are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> there's there's almost no point in our journey where we haven't felt like a bunch of hayseeds, but we fake it. So. <laughs> fake it till you make it. That's right. Um, At your library. But I don't think we were faking it because you know we have a solid foundation. We have all this experience from iLead. Mm -hmm. We have a, a proven website that you know, is being used. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think those were important things that they looked at that said, okay, well, this team has, you know, accomplished things before, yeah. so they might actually be able to do this. Um, so the Knight Foundation was giving away $2.5 million, or was it $2 million? It was like $2.5 million okay. total. And so we wrote yeah. a very, very, very um, kind of insane person grant and yeah. they wound up giving like the larger chunks of money to places like Boston Public Library and I think Seattle, Public yeah, Library so like stuff. big deals, like, you know, big organizations. Um, but there's another thing called a prototype challenge, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. And a prototype yeah. challenge is... So they gave about um, 10 or 11 prototype fund mm -hmm. grants to libraries, and so it's a $35,000 grant. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's actually semi ILEAD esque because the Knight Foundation is really interested in finding out what you learn. So they give you this grant to help you test out your idea and they really want you to test your assumptions. You know, we made a lot of assumptions in our proposal about how this would work and, and who needed it. Our official proposal is to circulate maker kits throughout the state of Illinois. So um, using the interlibrary loan system. I mean at first we were like, are we just gonna put them in Amy's extra bedroom and the <laughs> post office? We didn't know what we would do. So um, so the prototype fund gives us the opportunity just to test out our assumptions and to really test out the kits and the delivery system. Um, and if it doesn't work, they're like, that's okay. If it didn't work, just tell us what you learned. Um, somebody else might pick it up later. So right. Um, and if it does work, then there's an opportunity for more funding to expand. So, you know, right now we're focusing on Illinois. Maybe we can expand um, to other states, which would be really awesome. And I think the way we're going to do that, we're very fortunate. We don't actually have to catalog and house a bunch of kits. Is we went to the Illinois State Library and said, hey, this is happening. Do you think you might like to get in on it? And Anne, of course, being Anne, was like, oh, my God, yes. So... We were really lucky about that. She she's been just banana supportive. Really good. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what happened. That's how it happened. Um, these are our handles. If you'd like to follow us, or if you'd kind of like to look at what we did and kind of you know maybe copy the social media stuff, please do. Um, we had to create a press release that the Autodesk parent company of Instructables wanted, but I actually suggest creating a press release anyway. Um, you can submit it to local inst like local news institutions, you can push it out on Twitter, you can have it on your website just in case. Act like it's a big deal and everybody else will too. That's my best piece of advice. Um, you know, act like it means something and people will as well. Um, we I think probably the bulk of our traffic back to the website other than from Autodesk seems to come from Pinterest and Facebook. So just make a plan for how you're going to attack that. Maybe one person on your team will be the social media person. Um, this is just a thought. I know a lot of people are doing blogs where they want to reach out specifically to the librarian population. Um, this is a great way to do it. You've made it to iLead. 
celebrate your fabulousness. We're not sorry for being so fabulous. <laughs> um, we are um, kind of just along for the journey, and I lead was a really great start for us to try something new. It wound up having legs that we didn't imagine, and it's been fun. Your project is going to be your project. It's unique to you. It's going to be whatever you want to do with it. It is yours to decide what to do with. It may be done in October. It may continue. One of you may continue with it. The rest might say, nope, I'm going to, to hand this one off. Do what you got to do with it. But you have a good idea. It might be something. Treat it like it is. Thank you. Thanks for coming. The end. <laughs>